There are two official ways to shut down your garden and the way that you choose to go with is going to be completely dependent on your situation, which is why you're going to have to watch this entire video to figure out which situation or which close down method is best for you. But first, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and enjoy this absolutely beautiful, beautiful leek flower. How gorgeous is that? Never done it before, but when you have really hot heat, like 40 degrees Celsius for three weeks straight, anything can happen in zone three. Let's jump into it. So when it comes to shutting down the garden, there are things that you wanna take into consideration to determine which method is best for you. Now you can do a hybrid of these two methods and kind of get the benefits of both worlds dependent on what your situation may be. So I'm not gonna be talking about fertilizing or soil amending. I'm simply talking about the foliage and what we're gonna do with all the biomass to shut that garden down. I will do a separate video on soil amendments and a separate video on um, mechanical manipulation of the soil in the fall here in the upcoming weeks to officially shut down this year's gardening season. Now this is very specific to cold climate gardeners. Because we get snow, we can handle things a little bit differently than those in the warmer climates. If you're in a continuous cropping climate, anything like that, your situation will be drastically different. So just keep that in mind. So the first thing we wanna look for is disease. Did we have issues with the roots, the shoots, or the leaves in regards to pests or disease? This can be bacteria, so um, any form of blights and then it can also be fungal so powdery mildew is a great example of this we then wanted to determine if that disease in particular or that insect in particular overwinters in our debris so flea beetles for example will overwinter in debris cucumber beetles will overwinter in our debris <laughs> powdery mildew, things of that nature. So once we determine that it can be overwintered in just the, the regular debris of our garden, we now know we have to remove both the mulch and the upper biomass at a minimum. If it's a roots issue, you may need to consider removing the below ground biomass as best as you possibly can. After that, we wanna determine if that bacterial or fungal or pest will survive a hot compost situation if we are composting. Now the answer to this for the most part for bacteria and pests is no, it will not survive a hot compost. However, fungi can. And because those spores are so insidious, regardless of the temperatures they're exposed to, we want to actually discard these in the garbage and not compost them whatsoever because those spores will just multiply over time. And big hint here, if you have not watched a lot of my disease control videos, one that's very common for gardeners to overwinter in debris is powdery mildew. And this includes after it's gone to the compost. So powdery mildew, throw that plant in the garbage because it's just going to amplify your problem over time. However, things like blight and that, which we actually just did a video here on, I'm not sure if you're gonna post this before or after this one, but regardless, you that's one that you can compost and it will dissipate as long as the tissue is not living. So once we expose our soil to the cold nature of winter here in Canada, we're able to actually purify that soil as best as possible. Now keep in mind that with this, we may end up with runoff and erosion. And so you kind of have to hedge your bets on what's best for you. Now, say you do know your area erodes very easily. Maybe you have a very small clay particle or a nice silt soil and you're worried about the runoff or the potential removal of that topsoil what you can then do is re-mulch the area with fresh mulch so fresh straw fresh whatever mulch you're using that has not been used in the garden and is being brought in from a hopefully theoretically sterile source. Now I would wait to place this on the actual soil surface until the soil really gets a nice purifying cold snap and kind of wait till the last possible moment of when snow is really starting to pile on and then begin to put your mulch on. The reason for this is because mulch will insulate the soil and I did a video on this the audio didn't turn out too hot but regardless if you mulch a soil right now while it's still pretty warm considering because um, it's it's taken in a lot of that solar energy over the entire summer season we will actually kind of keep that warmth in so we don't want to keep the warmth in we want the warmth to disappear because again that warmth could potentially overwinter winter harmful 
additions to our soil. The other thing we can do if we want to mulch right away because we don't want to forget to put the mulch on before the snow hits is to use different forms of biological control. So this can come in the form of mites or nematodes, grubs, you name it, all of which are beneficials that then eat the harmful bugs and critters. And that is another method that we can go with. And the last kind of control we can do here would be to top dress with a compost or a composted manure that's biologically active and contains multitudes of beneficial microbes that will eat away at spores and bacterial and insect issues, uh, larvae, eggs, you name it, that are overwintering in our soil. A nice composting layer on top will just help nibble away at those issues. So when we remove our plants, there's a best practices with this and best practice in a no-till scenario where we're trying to build up lots of soil structure is actually just to clip the plant stem off at the surface. Whenever we tug those roots, we're actually ripping apart any glues that have taken place or set in place, any aggregation that may have been set in place, along with the natural canals that the roots have put in place that as they decompose will leave basically little transport systems for not only macro fauna, so things like centipedes or roly polies, whatever the case is, but also oxygen. And so to help prevent against that, we just snip the stem off at the surface. And this is particularly important if we're dealing with a sand or a clay that's just poor in structure and we want to build that structure up. Every time we give a good tug, we end up actually removing the, the structures that have been built during that growing season. Now, obviously this isn't gonna be possible if we're harvesting beets or carrots or potatoes. I mean, there's a lot of disruption going on in that case, but something like a tomato or a kale plant, we can do this with no issue. So the second way to close down the garden would be to leave everything in place except for the mulch. So we can again remove the mulch because it's not serving really any purpose per se, and we can compost it, put fresh mulch on if we like, but leave the actual plants in place. Now this is going to be heavily beneficial to anyone that has a bed that, or a soil that in general loses water very easily or it leaches water very quickly, and you wanna capture as much snow as possible. We have wind and swirls and blizzards, and when we have these giant plants sitting up in our gardens, we actually can get the benefit of some snow capture, which will ultimately help us get a little bit of a boost in the spring. Now, I wouldn't recommend this if you're intending to use that plot to put cold frames on or any sort of before season growth because you're going to be shoveling off a lot of snow. These tomato plants behind me, they're gonna capture a ton of snow in the spring. So just keep that in mind, but it's a great way to ensure that that happens. Now this rule applies to cover crops as well. So if you're doing some cover cropping, you would want to actually leave those cover crops in place as long as there is no disease or pest issues that you're concerned about overwintering. So the cover crops that I'm doing in my front yard for some beds I'm establishing this year, I'm going to just let them run their course out until the end of the year. But overall, I hope that you guys found this helpful. Let me know in the comments down below what you learned new. If you knew that snipping the crop off at the base is worth it or not, and or if you just tugged them out before, I'd be interested to know the answer to that. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comments down below if you want to see a video on amendments and amending that soil for the fall. I'd like to get your guys' feedback on that one and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!